Hey everyone, it's a new week, it's a new loop, so let's jump right in. As if we hadn't had enough of the global pandemic, nuclear war threats, and rampant inflation annihilating the dream of home ownership, an ancient Japanese stone said to contain the spirit of an evil demon has suddenly cracked open. He's been in there for 1,000 years. My guess is he'll take one look around and say, yeah, I, I think I'm out. Yuga Labs, the creators of Board Ape Yacht Club, have bought CryptoPunks and MeBits making it the Amazon of NFTs. By expanding their zoo to include not just monkeys, but also little pixel dudes, they've secured control of the three most valuable NFT brands, essentially buying a monopoly. They claim monkeys will remain the center of their universe since what's good for punks is good for apes. Looking ahead, we're wondering whether the NFT craze will mutate into warring megacorps or one unipolar multinational JPEG cartel. Who knows, maybe the NFT craze will come full circle and we'll end up with brick and mortar NFT malls. The deranged rant slipped into the game's change log, urged presumably male players to grow up and take off their masks in order to demonstrate courage and obtain a girlfriend. Concluding with the pithy finale, what are you afraid of? Getting laid? Players swarmed the game's reviews with negative reactions, causing its rating to nosedive. This won't be the first time it's been posed whether the art can be separated from the artist. Certainly studios can choose how they use their platform, and players are entitled to how they respond. In other words, they can F around and find out. A better question might be, was the patch notes a wise place for your hot take on women's lust for anti-mask men? Could this happen in any other industry? Signing in a VR context is limited by what mechanics will allow. For example, crossed fingers might be a vital piece of a particular sign, but impossible to communicate on VR controllers. Sign languages are deeply nuanced in movements, hand position, and facial communication in a way that your average kitty cat avatar just won't support. Helping Hands, a 5,000 strong community on VR chat, has come together to adapt ASL to a unique virtual reality sign language and they're sharing it with deaf and hearing people worldwide. Deaf people's isolation from other deaf people and from the hearing dominant culture is a key component of autism, the systemic discrimination and disadvantage imposed on deaf people. The community understands deafness not as an impairment, but a linguistic and cultural minority. Where the hearing world is interested in technology to assimilate deaf people, like cochlear implants or motion tracking to translate ASL to spoken English, deaf-led projects are using tech to allow deaf culture to flourish and grow. Although the Helping Hands community is small, this is a major testament to the ingenuity of deaf culture to literally reinvent language around technological constraints. A new fish has just dropped in the ocean's twilight zone, and he's rainbow. The rose-veiled fairy wrasse hangs out around 130 to 230 feet beneath the ocean's surface, off the coast of the Maldives, and is a delight. Incredible fellow. We love him. We forgive his tweets. This is a clear reminder not only that there's so much we don't know about the ocean, but what is at stake with rapid climate change? The coral reefs around the Maldives have been decimated by global warming, and Maldives themselves could totally disappear by 2050. Besides the surprise of an enchanting new specimen, this is one more critical reason to take it to the streets. Discord has a hacker epidemic, and users feel like the company is kind of like, eh. The platform has been inundated with false links, account lockouts, scams, and general hackeration. With Discord practically institutionalized as the group chat and discussion space, the stakes are high for content creators and online communities. Looks like their only alternative is gonna be hosting discussions in the Instagram comments. Like cavemen. Bots and scams are like rats. Without action, they multiply quickly and all their tails get tangled together, and they become a rat king. A rat king. So why has Discord let the problem get so out of hand? Some say Discord's monopoly has given them little incentive to retain users. That is, until we unionize the girls and move on to the next platform. In response to sanctions from Western countries, Russia is effectively legalizing piracy of some games, movies, and more. The lifted legal restrictions mean that material from unfriendly countries is allowed to be used without paying for the intellectual property. As Nintendo, Sony, and Microsoft have all pulled game sales to Russia in response to its invasion of Ukraine, the Russian state won't come after any pirates. In other words, Tony Hawk Pro Skater 
Raider 2 now costs zero dollars. This is a major blow to copyright hounds as Nintendo has been religiously hunting game pirates as of late. I mean, we've already told you about Gary Bowser. The deification of intellectual property itself has been brought under question during the pandemic, where after two years into a public health catastrophe, we are only beginning to see agreements to waive intellectual property patents on vaccines. With Western courts otherwise doubling down on ramifications for IP use and Russian powers easing restrictions, we're certainly seeing a strong East versus West contrast. Who knew the world's most pressing geopolitical juxtaposition could be partially found on GameCube? Speaking of Nintendo, Super Nintendo World is opening at Universal Studios Hollywood in 2023. Our understanding of the mega theme park was once limited to singular entertainment conglomerates, but it's worth noting that Nintendo is not owned by Universal. Could this be the future of licensing? Could Disney respond with a Minecraft mini park? Can you imagine if we got an actual Wii Sports Resort? Musicians are attaching synthesizers to plants and they're actually creating some heat. To be clear, the plants themselves are not opening up FL Studios and cooking up a mixtape directly. A community of artists are using sensors attached to plants and mushrooms as an inspirational challenge in music. For example, correlating different electrical charges within the plant as different musical notes, then seeing what they can mix with the result. Technology's ability to unlock the artistic possibilities of the world around us is true Truly awe-inducing, and we're definitely headed for some sci-fi level art in the upcoming years. Hopefully this means we're closer to a Grammy-winning album being co-written by a cactus. This comes as a reaction to Meta's posting guidelines, allowing calls for violence against Vladimir Putin, Belarusian President Alexander Lukashenko, or against Russians themselves. Russia has marked Meta as an extremist organization in response to this policy, which sounds extreme, but Meta isn't totally innocent either. Users have pointed out the cherry picking in Meta's response to global violence. During the 2021 attacks on occupied Palestine, human rights groups identified that Facebook was censoring pro-Palestinian content and banning activists. An ensuing campaign called Facebook, We Need to Talk, raised concerns about private companies mediating what information is shared from a war zone and called for transparency in Meta's policy. Although there's sometimes a murky line between acting as avenues of free speech versus preventing misinformation and hate mongering, it's important to remember that social media is not only a crucial tool for communications in conflict zones, it's ideally a more democratic, less gatekept source of first person news. The criteria used to moderate international public communications could at the very least be explicit information if not determined by its own users. Meanwhile, we hope those affected by war continue to find ways to share online from the ground. Thanks for tuning in to this week's Loot. Subscribe to us here on YouTube, follow us on your favorite platform, and I'll see you next week.